Welcome YouTube, this is Bharat from Ready Daddy's LLC. Today we are going to see how to set up an Ubuntu 20.04 LTS with software RAID 1 with two NVMEs on an AMD Ryzen 3950X with 128 gigs of RAM and two into four TB NVMEs with an AS Rock motherboard. So let's go ahead. Uh, I do have the AS Rock based IPMI over here. Let me log in. And uh, once I'm in, I'll go for the remote control on the left navigation menu and I'll launch the KVM. So IPMIs these days, they are coming with these HTML5 based consoles, which is very easy to use, yeah, you know, compared to the traditional ones where we have to download the Java applet and make sure that we have the Java runtime on our servers to, you know, support it. But now, Let's go ahead with this. So as you can see, I already have an Ubuntu server over here. I'm just going to reinstall that according to the client specifications. So I've downloaded the Ubuntu 20.04 server 64-bit ISO. I'll click on Start Media. I'll reset the server. Now, after the server reset, it's done and uh, we reach the boot host image, we need to start hammering down the delete key to make sure that we get into the BIOS. Now, why are we going into the BIOS? Because if we don't, the boot priority will try to boot from the NVMe volumes rather than the ISO we just attached. The reason for that is because most probably the priority is set to do it that way. So just to override that, we'll go ahead and say, use the uh, AMI virtual CD room zero to boot from. So that's it. As you can see on the top right here, that it's trying to load the ISO as things go on. So we'll just go ahead with uh, uh, install Ubuntu server. Now it will keep uh, transferring data from the remote desktop to the IPMI and stream the data in full. And then Ubuntu is going to check the integrity of this ISO and then provide us the installation option. I'll pause this video until that time comes because it's going to take some time. Uh, we'll get back to you guys. Okay, and uh, we'll scroll down a little bit and then we'll go for the down option. Uh, now we have to configure the network. We'll go with the manual uh, one because we are not using a DHCP server over here. We are uh, using the subnets that were assigned to us by the data center. So, I'm going to enter them now. This is the subnet that was assigned to me. So the first address would be 98. And the gateway would be 1 minus the first address based on the input from the data center. For name servers, we'll use the Google name servers. <clears throat> then we save it, wait until the network is connected, and then we we'll say done. We don't need a proxy address because we are not using a proxy to, the con uh, to connect to the internet. Uh, we'll be using the US archive of Ubuntu to make sure that uh, the latency is low and the packages are installed faster uh, because the server is in LA. Here is where we'll be uh, configuring our RAID 1. Uh, it was already configured, so I'll just redo the entire thing so that you guys can have a look. Okay. 
in let's click on that click on that here as well okay so we'll be using only one device now since it's a raid one uh, it's better to use both the devices as a boot device so i'll just say use a boot device and then i'll do the same here as well in raid one what happens is since the data is being mirrored that means you have a local copy of this data from the disk number one to the disk number two so that's that now the clan doesn't want any swap partitions he asked for entire data to be assigned to root so we'll be doing that i'll add a gpt partition uh, leaving it unformatted uh, to the fullest extent i'll do the same on the second disk as well now that we have uh, both our partitions we'll go ahead with creating a software raid one we'll just select partition two partition two and it will be called md0 as you can see we now have a new software raid one partition and we'll just uh, we'll just uh, format that entire device to act as an ext4 file system for root and done now we can just go down to the done option and just continue uh, usually we provision the Ubuntu user as the default whenever setting up Ubuntu for our clients but if they request otherwise you can create another alternative user here I've chosen uh, to install OpenSSH server so that we have SSH capabilities by default we're not cho choosing any additional packages such as Kubernetes or Nextcloud or anything else that is something the cl client will decide and that's it now the installation will take care of everything from creating the raid pulling the image data into the disks and uh, it will also perform security updates and patches and uh, once it's done it's going to give us an option called reboot so let's wait and see If you guys have any questions pertaining to the videos that I'll be posting moving forward, please do comment and let me know. And uh, any streamers out there or fellow streamers who come in to look into this video, if I can improve my streaming, do, if you have any suggestions that can help me do that, I'm all welcome to, you know, listen to them and do the necessary changes. So now you can see that it's downloading and installing the security updates. We have an option to update, uh, cancel the updates and reboot, but we'll wait for it since we have a valid network and let's, you know, let it do its thing. Okay, now it's restoring its app configuration and yeah that's done now all i need to do is click on reboot it says it failed to unmount the cd room once but if you look at the right side we no longer see the image so just press enter and now it will start rebooting now it will directly go on to the disk that has the boot partition the benefits of raid one are um let's say if you lose one of these disks you can always work with the other one so you have a backup of the entire data that you're storing in and uh, you know in the other disk and it's being mirrored on the parallel 
Okay, for some reason, this um, KVM is looking a bit weird. I'm not sure why. Um, it's kind of weird. It's looking a little 3D-ish. I'm not sure. I'm not doing this, so I'm not sure what exactly happened. Uh, let me see if I can uh, refresh the screen. So I'll just stop the KVM and then restart it. That was kind of cool and weird at the same time. Yeah, for some reason it's doing that once again. Really not sure what's happening here. But that's fine. I mean, we're not really going to use this interface to log into the server, so. It's taking quite some time to configure the network and trying to reach the internet. So we'll wait for it to do that. And once it's done, it will start the cloud in it processes, which include uh, auto updating if uh, there's any updates left and uh, resizing the partitions if we have done any such changes prior to the boot. So cloud in it will be taking care of all that stuff. Yeah, I think it's done. And yeah, it's closed to the login screen. Um, again, I'm really not sure what's wrong over here, so I'm not able to comment further. But uh, we'll try getting our SSH console. I use Excel 7. It's quite a handy tool. Okay, so root login by default is disabled. We'll go with uh, Ubuntu as our user. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, now we are in. So as you can see, we are in and uh, the partition seems to be about right will enable boot login because that's what the customer wants but if you take my advice i'd say never enable root login rather use pseudo based users it's a lot safer that way and uh, always uh, encourage ssh key based authentication that's a secure way of authenticating to your servers rather than password based ones because these days, a lot of attacks are happening on your SSH ports uh, and um, they try using some sort of brute force encrypt that randomly tries passwords that have been, you know, previously used or compromised. Also, what you could do is you could change your SSH port uh, to maybe any random number. This will help you set your against the brute force at least. So 4568 is a port. I'll save it. I'll say service SSH key restart. And, okay, I missed an S. And now that when that's done, don't immediately exit from the shell. Confirm that you know um, the port is listening, and make sure that you're able to access that port. So I'll use netstat to check if 4568 is being listened okay that's done and then i'll check ip tables uh, so we don't have any rules now i'll try to ssh root into 185 
okay that didn't work because i forgot to set a password to uh, to the root user so i'll use pssw space root okay that's done now let me try once again So it's taking a little bit of time to show me the console. I mean the password prompt. I'll just re okay, it's here. Yeah, and we're in. So now we are logged in as the root user. So like I said, this is not encourageable. So always use a, a named user with uh, pseudo permissions and uh, you should be good. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, comment, like, subscribe and share. We'll be coming in with uh, more videos about more uh, Linux related stuff.